said, we need to remind ourselves that the grace of God is sufficient for us. The grace of God will cover us. The grace of God will give us the strength to withstand every challenge. And today as I speak, I want to, to, you to know that I'm including everybody. This message is just, it's just not for mothers, for, but for everybody. Because these are the things that we all face in life. We took some lessons from Queen Esther. And I would like us to read Esther chapter 4, verse 14. Esther 4, 14. And by the way, thank you so much, Pastor David, for allowing me to speak on this pulpit. I don't take it for granted. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. He does a good job of doing this week in, week out. So thank you. Esther 4, 14. It says, for if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Hmm. Queen Esther, she displayed just a remarkable courage and composure when she came before. You know, she risked her life by coming before the king uninvited because she had to be invited to go to the king. But uh, he, she really took that risk with courage uh, because the Jews were about to be annihilated and she had to do something about it. So she pleaded with the king for their lives. Esther was called for such a time as this. She was called for such a time as that. And today I just want to remind everybody that you have been called for such a time as this. So the title of my message today is Chosen for Purpose. Chosen for Purpose. Whatever season of your life you find yourself in today. I said it yesterday and I'm saying it today that this is your time. It is your time to rise up and shine. It is your time to, to fulfill that which God has called you to do. It is your time. It's never too late. It's never too early. You know, this is the right time to do what is right. It is your time. It is your time. This is your moment. This is your season, your opportunity to shine and step into that God has called you to do. That which God has created you to do. Because we are all created with purpose. We are chosen for purpose. You, you, you might be thinking, gosh, yes, I know. I've been working so hard to achieve this, and it seems like nothing is happening. You have been working so hard. You have been, you, you've already been persevering through challenges because we all go through challenges. So you've done the hard work, so keep going. You've held on to hope when things seemed bleak. You did that. You have shown resilience and determination and unwavering faith when things were tough. Hold on to hope. You have been chosen for purpose. All that was preparation for what is about to come. So just hold on to hope. Don't give up. All of those struggles, they are leading you or they have led you to this moment. Your moment, your time. God has a way of orchestrating events, doesn't he? God orchestrates events of your life, preparing you for this very moment. He has been shaping you all those tough times. They've been shaping you, re refining you, just to prepare you so that you are ready when that moment comes. Because as we know, it is embarrassing when that moment comes and we are not ready. We need to be ready. We need to be ready. Hallelujah. So don't doubt yourself. You have been chosen for purpose. Don't underestimate your potential. You have got so much in you. There is so much in you. You know why? Because you are created by God. When he created you, he put his greatness on the inside of you. We are made in the image of God. We carry purpose. 
we carry purpose. We are the solution that the world is looking for. It's already in you. It's already in you. So it's your time to step out in faith. It's your time to rise up. It's your time to seize that opportunity when it comes your way. We are not those who shrink back. We are not those who give up. We are not those who give in. But we are ready to step into the moment that God has prepared for us. The thing is we need to remember that his timing is always perfect. So when he says it's your time, it's your time. Hallelujah. God knows the desires of our hearts. He's the one who has put those desires in us. And he's faithful. He's faithful to fulfill his promises to you. He says his promises are yes and amen. Yes and amen. So let's trust in his plan. He has a plan for our lives. Let's embrace this moment with confidence. That quiet confidence that we find in God. That quiet confidence that is found in his word and his promises. So let's be courageous today, church, and go for it. We are destined for greatness. Let's believe it with all of our hearts. Let's receive it with all that we have. Let us walk boldly into our divine destiny because we have a destiny. You know, the, the world is waiting. What does the word of God say? It, it is, it's groaning, waiting for the sons of God, for the children of God to be revealed. The world is waiting for you to shine your light. The world is waiting for you to make a difference that only you can make. Hallelujah. So it's your time. You are anointed. You are appointed. You are chosen for such a time as this. Just like Queen Esther. You know, Pastor David said, I don't know if it's last week or the week before, that, you know, we tend to wonder if we are chosen. But the thing is, if you are saved, you are chosen. So church, you are chosen for purpose. You are the chosen one for that call in your life. Not the next person, but you. You are born for such a time as this. Hallelujah. You know, in a world filled with uncertainty and confusion, knowing that we have a divine purpose can actually provide us with direction. It can provide us with meaning and with fulfillment. We are talking this morning uh, about people without hope, those who do not know God. Like, how do they go on with life? How? Just how? When you don't have God, you don't have hope. Things will seem bleak and you wouldn't know what to do, which is why some people resort to suicide. But we have God. We have purpose. We have hope. So let's let that really give us the drive and the determination to live our lives with, with gusto, with passion, with, with purpose. Uh, you know, I'm a citizen of two countries. I'm a British citizen and I am a Botswana citizen. So yesterday, there was the finals, if you, if you are aware of the Miss World contest, and uh, the, the young lady from Botswana did very well. She was on the top four. Unfortunately, she didn't win, but in the eyes of Botswana, she has won. <laughs> yeah, they, they couldn't believe that she didn't win. They think, you know, they've been, they've been cheated, <laughs> like, like you do when you lose. <laughs> But she did very well. So we're just saying, me and David, like how in the past, like a long time ago, we used to just spend sleepless nights watching these programs. Because for us, we didn't really understand uh, the meaning of having purpose in life. We lived for these moments. We lived to, uh, to watch the Oscars, to watch the, the Academy Awards, the Brits Awards. We, we just wanted to watch people live out their purpose, not realizing that we actually have. Oh my goodness, we didn't know the extent of what it means to live a life of purpose. All we did was watch people live theirs out. But we have a purpose to fulfill. We have a purpose to fulfill. But we thank God who has enlightened our minds 
the eyes of our understanding have been opened. We now know better, which is why we should live out our lives with purpose, with confidence, with courage, knowing that we are chosen for purpose. Let's read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to keep this. It says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Uh, our friend Don encouraged us on the scripture yesterday that we are created to do good works. You know, this scripture reminds us that we are not just random beings. God didn't just randomly make us and not have a plan for our lives. He has a plan for our lives. We are uniquely designed by God for a specific purpose, the good works. The, it just emphasizes that our purpose involves doing good works that God has planned in advance for us. He is not surprised by anything that we go through today. I like to say he's not in heaven flailing his hands, wondering, oh my goodness, what is this now? I didn't see that coming. That's not our God. He has already prepared these good works in advance. We can do so much with what God has given us. That seed of greatness on the inside of us can do so much. We are supposed to be a blessing to our generation. We are a blessing going somewhere to happen. That is who we are. So we shouldn't be, you know, just going through life haphazardly, just doing things because everybody else is doing it. But we have to know exactly what God has called us to do. So today I'm here to remind you, church, that your life has meaning. You are chosen for purpose. Uh, Psalm 139, verse 16. Let's read that verse. It's, uh, it's a very encouraging verse for me. It says, Your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed, and in your book they, were all, they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. So before we were even born, God had a plan and a purpose for each of our lives. You know what that means? We are not accidents. We are not mistakes. No, no, no. But we are deliberate creations created by the creator with that specific purpose. By God himself. So we have unique gifts. We have unique talents that God has already put on the inside of us that are going to help us live out our purpose. Romans 12, verses 6 and 8. Romans 12, 6 and 8. It says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liber liberal liberality, <laughs> he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So if you have a gift of prophecy, you know what you need to do? Prophesy. If you have a gift of teaching, teach. If you have a gift of encouragement, encourage. If you have a gift of giving, give. If you have a gift of leading, lead. If you have a gift of showing mercy, show mercy to those who need it. So whatever gift you have, use it and don't waste it. God is, a, is not a God of wastage. You know, these gifts, are, are, they're not to be buried or they're, they're not to be wasted, but they are, you know, they're supposed to be used for the glory of God and the benefit of other people. That's God's plan for our lives, isn't it? That's his plan. Remember the parable of the talents, how uh, the one who was given, is it one, just thought, you know what, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to bury it. And the one who was given, I can't remember, two, five 
manage to multiply it. God wants us to multiply that which he has already given us. And he has already given us and equipped us with the tools on how to do that. When we use our gifts effectively, we have the potential to make such a big difference in our world today, in those around us. And it becomes like a, um, you know that effect, what, what do you call that effect when you do something and somebody else does it and everybody, that is a ripple effect. Yeah, so when we use our gifts according to how God wants us to use them, there will be a ripple effect. I'm reminded, I think Pastor David has shared this before, was it Billy Graham? Somebody who came to a meeting and, uh, you know, some, like it was like, they organized a crusade, but only one person came. And the preacher still preached his heart out. And the person who came was Billy Graham. And what happened? Billy Graham has led millions to Christ. You know what I mean? So God has a plan. God has a purpose. It might not look like it. But you know what? We said yesterday, it is in the little moments that they are big moments. The wiping of bums, like we said yesterday, the wiping of noses, the changing of diapers, they, they might seem like little things, but they are actually the biggest moments of your lives. Because you are raising a king, you are raising a president, you are raising a world leader, you are raising a world changer while you do the nitty gritty of lives. So God is, uh, God is with us and he has a purpose for our lives. Another scripture that I would like us to read is Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under foot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. The Word of God is telling us something, isn't it? We need to let our light shine. We shouldn't hide. We shouldn't uh, hide it under the table, but we should let it shine. And, and when we yield our lives to God, when we let Him use us, that's when the light will shine. When we step out in faith, the light will shine. We shouldn't be those who say, oh, we shouldn't be doing things to be seen. No, you're not doing things to be seen. You are doing things so that the light of God will shine through you. You know what I mean? It's something that people have kind of misunderstood. I think I was at some point in my life, you know, when I was thinking, oh, you know, I don't want to be seen. And, you know, but God, when he has called you, you step out in faith. No matter how difficult it may seem at first. No matter how uncomfortable it might seem. He wants us to get out of our comfort zone. He wants us to step out of the boat and be whom he has called us to be. It's not always easy, but what did we say yesterday? When he calls you, he provides for that call. He will cover you with his grace. He will make sure that you are okay. He will make sure that all is well with you. So Jesus is telling his disciples here that they are the salt of the earth. And that they, that they are the light of the world. And that their good deeds should shine for all to see. We cannot hide that lamp. We cannot hide that under the table. We have to walk in it. We have to fully walk on our purpose using our gifts and our talents so that we can impact those who are around us. I remember a time when I was going through something that was very painful. And uh, you know when you are just teary, even walking in the city center, you are teary. And I remember I was walking, that was maybe 15 years ago before I met you, love. <laughs> it's not... <laughs> So I was walking in town, and I remember walking, and there was a lady coming my way. You know, there are these things that really stay with you, and because it's God showing you something. Walking in town, little Terry, and a lady was walking towards me, and you know what she was doing? She was also crying. And you know what God said to me? Mapula, you can't all be crying. <laughs> 
You know, it was like you were saying you need to be strong so that you can help other people. You know, oh my goodness. You know, God, it says he, he qualifies the called. Because at that particular moment, I felt weak, didn't I? And it seemed like, God, you're being unreasonable for calling me when I'm crying and saying, be strong. Let me have my moment. <laughs> you know, let me cry. But God, I said, you can't all be crying. Somebody has to be strong to help somebody else. So it doesn't matter how weak you feel today. I tell you, you are chosen for purpose. You are chosen for purpose. And if you hold on to hope and not give in, your breakthrough is just around the corner. And you know, for, your break, for you to see your breakthrough, your breakthrough will be somebody else's breakthrough. That is how God works. So let us just, you know, be confident in him despite how we feel. Because our confidence is in God. It is not in our ability. Our competency is in God. It is not in our ability. Our efficiency is only found in him. We are who we are because of him. We are who we are because of the grace of God. And it enables us to withstand the challenges of life. Grace under pressure. That's what it is. That was it. So there will be challenges when you are pursuing your purpose. We will face challenges, whether we like it or not. We will face obstacles. And you know when you are in the midst of the challenge, it's not easy, is it? You don't want it. You want, why me? What, God take it away. But it's just how it is. We will face obstacles. That's why they are called obstacles, because it won't be easy. You will face setbacks, but take comfort in knowing that God is with you every step of the way. Even when you don't see his hand, he is there with you in that moment. And one day you will look back and wonder, how did I do that? But you will see the hand of God. You will see the hand of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's with us. God is with us every step of the way. He has already gone before us. He has promised us the victory. He said in his word, cheer up, I have overcome the world. So we are overcomers. Even when we feel weak, we declare with our mouth that I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That I am strong in the Lord, even though I feel weak right now. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. You are chosen for purpose. And with God's help, you will overcome any adversity. And you will fulfill that purpose for which we, you were chosen to do. Hallelujah. When things get tough, you don't give up. Your breakthrough is somebody else's breakthrough. You holding on and living out your purpose despite the challenges is an encouragement for somebody else. You know, other people's destiny is tied to your obedience. That's profound, isn't it? You obeying what God has called you to do will help somebody else come out of their shell and live out their purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, you are chosen for purpose. Shall we just stand on our feet and just begin to declare the promises of God in our lives? For we are chosen for purpose, and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We don't look at what we have, but what he has. And he has more than we need to fulfill our purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you just say after me, if you don't mind, I am chosen. For a divine purpose, my life has meaning and significance. God has a plan for my life. And I trust in his perfect timing and guidance. I am equipped with unique gifts and talents to fulfill 
my purpose and make a difference in the world. I embrace my journey and the challenges that I face, knowing that they are shaping me for greatness. I am worthy of success, happiness, and fulfillment. I confidently pursue my purpose. I walk in faith, knowing that God's promises for my life will come to fruition in His perfect timing. I am a vessel of love, a vessel of love, of light and positivity, radiating God's grace and goodness to those around me. I am empowered. I am empowered. I am empowered to overcome obstacles and setbacks, knowing that they are stepping stones. They are stepping stones to my destiny. I embrace my uniqueness. I embrace the path, the path set before me, knowing that it is leading to my purpose. I am grateful for the opportunity to serve others and make a positive impact in the world. This is my time. This is my time. This is my season. This is my moment. I am chosen for purpose, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So, church, we are chosen for purpose. We have the grace of God when there is pressure. We can do all things, not because of our own strength. For it is not by might, by power, but it is by the Spirit of God. So, as we go on to this week, walk with your, you know, shoulder square, knowing that I belong here. I'm called for this moment. I'm called for this season. This is my time. I have worked hard and I'll continue to do so, trusting that God will do, his, will do the rest. So this is who we are, children of the Most High God, chosen and appointed for such a time as this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And God bless you. Hallelujah.